Austin's a freaking idiot. He set off a freaking fire alarm. <laughs> We're gonna run too freaking much. He just got in trouble for having a song now. and teachers to prepare for a school shooter, well, often by pretending there actually is one. These drills may help, but the drama can be intense, even if it's all an act. And it's not just the kids who say they're scared. Here's ABC's David Wright. I'm gonna kill everybody! Nobody's getting out of here! It's every parent's worst nightmare, an active shooter on campus. <laughs> threatening to kill innocent kids. In this case, just a drill, but a terrifyingly realistic drill. And that's now an issue. How do you strike a balance between preparing kids and scaring the pants off them? It may be just a drill, but the trauma is real. Outside Tampa, Florida yesterday, parents and students say Jewett Middle School got it wrong. The school there held a drill without warning in which police officers showed up on campus, weapons drawn. Our principal had announced that we were going to have a lockdown. Seventh grader Lauren Marino and her siblings frantically texted their mom. Police came in with guns and I'm kind of scared. We actually thought someone was gonna come in here and kill us. Their mom was scared too. Well, I'm panicking because I'm thinking that it's, you know, a legitimate shooter is coming. Xavier Tate was scared too. His dad raced to the school, unaware it was only a drill. My husband almost got a ticket coming over here yesterday. He was doing 130. The school has now apologized to the parents, and the local police chief now says officers won't use weapons in future drills, but the school will continue to hold unannounced lockdowns. The fact is, ever since Columbine 15 years ago, the U.S. has had more than 160 active shooter incidents. That's about one a month. And as we saw in Sandy Hook, even the youngest kids aren't safe. So in school districts across the country, lockdown drills are now as common as fire drills. 
Some go as far as covering students in fake blood and recruiting volunteers to play dead in the hallways, all in an effort to make the drills more realistic. Attention, this is a drill. We need to lock down. The modern now, version of duck and cover. Please go behind my desk. The teacher locks the door, pulls down the shade. Everyone's told to keep quiet. It's kind of scary, huh? The kids huddle quietly under the teacher's desk. Do you know why they do this drill? Do you worry that this scares students? We do, but we practice enough um, that we hope that students are, are as, as staff is, you know, getting used to the idea. We have to. How long do these go on for? Five minutes, I think, is maybe the longest we've ever had. The teacher in one classroom we visited in Colorado fully supports these drills. Holly Carpenter is a graduate of Columbine High School. When you look at those kids, are you always thinking somebody could come no. and take away their lives like that? No. When I look at those kids, I think how great they are. I think how lucky I am to teach them. And I think about, I wonder what they're going to be like when they grow up. That day changed her life. It's why she eventually went into teaching. And it's why she takes these drills very personally. I always get the lump in my throat. Because it's not about the flashbacks of Columbine or any of that for me. It is about the thought. Oh, see, I'm getting it now. It's about the thought of anyone even wanting to hurt my kids. The charter school where she teaches, Skyview Academy, does the basic lockdown drill most Colorado schools do. Nobody's getting up. And just last week, the teachers got a new kind of training. So how did you feel? Yeah, way more empowered and lots of adrenaline. <laughs> Jody Don is a former SWAT team member who responded to two active shootings in Colorado. If you see a gun like this open, what does that mean? He's teaching them how to recognize when the shooter is reloading his gun. He's out, right? And teaching them defense tactics. Oh, 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 there you go. Good, good. How and when to pounce. Cowboy approach. Sure. But it may it save a life? At Skyview Academy, they're trying out the new active shooter training for teachers only. It's held at night, no students involved. In the gym, Joe D. Don and his trainers are teaching the teachers how to take down a shooter. The atmosphere? Boisterous would be an understatement. Yeah, the go. teachers, including Holly Carpenter, are loving it. You think in real life you could do it? Or it I'd doesn't like matter? So. But not all teachers support the staging of active shooter drills at schools. Last month, a pre-K teacher from Virginia wrote an op-ed that quickly went viral. She writes, we are rounding up and silencing a generation of school children and terrifying those who care for them. It's time to stop rehearsing our deaths and start screaming. Of course, the pretend gunman we saw isn't really fighting back. I asked Joe D. Don about that. But is the 100-pound teacher or student really going to be able to take down the 200-pound gunman? Let's try it out. You just saw what happened to me. Did you guys see what happened to me? But he wasn't exactly right. fighting back. Right. Let's get Joe over here in a minute. He's about 220. You pick anybody out in this crowd and we'll see what happens. You All right. Do that? Let's do it. All right. So we got Holly Carpenter in her Columbine sweatshirt to do it again. I want you to do it again. Oh. But this time the guy's going to fight back a little bit. Okay? This time the gunman resisting her efforts to disarm him. Jody Don also encourages the teachers to enlist their students to help. You're yeah. saying enlist the football team, enlist right. the kids. Yeah, enlist the so kids. So they're asking a lot of people to be heroes who don't have the training or who aren't even necessarily adults. You bet. They don't have the training because we're not preparing them. When they come to this program, we're giving them a little bit of firearm knowledge. Smacking the question is, does this really protect people or does it put them in greater danger? 
I would imagine there are a lot of law enforcement types who would say, look, don't be a hero. You know, we're not advocating the teacher to go out in the hall and go on a suicide mission. What we're advocating is, here's some knowledge, here's a little better option for you. We are talking at that split second when they know that they've done everything they could prior to making that choice, whether it's evacuating, barricading, fortifying their location, to where that's no longer working, and I've got five seconds to figure out if I'm gonna try to do something to save myself or my kids. If you're staring down the barrel of a gun, Act. Right. 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 right, exactly. For one final exercise, the teachers do their normal duck and cover drill and see how they're sitting ducks. Then, everyone gets something to throw. In this case, a tennis ball, but in real life, it might well be a hole punch, or a desk chair, or a dictionary. This time, when the active shooter comes in, he suddenly finds he's the sitting duck. Would it work like this if the bullets were real? Or if this were a class full of kids, not teachers? Hard to really know. <laughs> to a kid, a scene like this could feel terrifyingly real and leave behind a lasting impression, but one that might save a life when it matters most. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Highlands Ranch, Colorado.